Hi everyone. Today we will paint... Oh come on. I know it's all violet, but don't fear the reaper. The Reaper is a character I picked in a game, so I was very motivated to find her through colors. It actually ended up very challenging, mostly because some strange shapes and volumes on the sculpt, especially on the face. Also, the decision I made for my whole set of Etherfields happened to be very hard to follow with this piece. I wanted to have the saturated minis with one strong color and a little bit of gold metallic accents. And the Reaper happened to be all colors and gold. I think I did fine with painting her, but you'll be the judge. So this video, as previous ones, will be split into three parts. Color choices, color blocking, and volume building, textures and the details. Also, I strongly recommend watching episode 0 of this series, where I talk about preparations, tools, brushes and paint mixing. Part 1. Color choices. This time I used artwork from the box as an inspiration. The background might be a little misleading, but I think that the strongest color here is on the flowers. I will use red with a tiny bit of magenta as my main color, shade it by adding dark violet and more magenta, and highlight it by adding very bright pink. You could argue that the lavender or violet color is more important, because there is simply more of it, but I want to tone it down a little so the flowers catch the eye first. I used my dark violet mixed with cold white as a main color, but I also mixed some bright pink and magenta in different steps. And here is a rare occasion I will say you should buy something. You won't be able to mix strong magenta with red and blue. Same with violet. I would say that magenta color is a must if you ever want to experiment with mixing your own colors. From hobby brands I can recommend magenta from Scale Color Artist and Chimera Colors. For skin, as in previous videos, I will mix red oxide with white and add yellow oxide. Highlight it with white, shade it with black. For makeup, I will also add some magenta. Her hair is brown with some red reflections, but I didn't like how it looked on the mini and decided to go with orange redhead. I used red oxide with black as a base and only highlighted by adding red, then orange and lastly white. For vegetation on the base, I used subgreen and highlighted it by adding yellow. For metallics, I used Skycolor Dwarven Gold and washed it with a mix of sepia ink and ultra matte varnish, same as in previous videos of this series. This time I also used steel color for the edge of the scythe and experimented with a Molotov liquid chrome marker. If you want a full list of paints I use, check the description of this video. You can also find links to my social media there if you want to check my other works or just maybe get more reference photos. Part 2. Color blocking You probably already know I like to start by adding paints to my wet palette. This time I started with dark violet, magenta and red on the left, all for her clothing and flowers. On the bottom left I also added cold yellow and sub-green, the colors I will use less, mostly for hair and vegetation. On the right I added red oxide and yellow oxide and left a lot of space for mixing skin colors. In the middle, I placed my cold white and black in a few different pools, so I have more control over the purity of paint. I also wanted to experiment with the super screaming strong pink ink from Montana. And spoiler alert, it is superb tool. It definitely stays in my paint set. 
On the bottom I also place glaze medium in case I need to change the fluidity of my paint. I also pre-mixed two colors I believe will be most challenging to find a satisfying hue and level of saturation. I started with the lavender. I mixed my super pigmented violet from Chimera with white and added a tiny bit of a screaming pink. You can also get this lavender mix from magenta with some white and navy blue. Or just simply use a similar ready color. For a skin I started with red oxide, yellow oxide and white, mixed all together. As you can see I don't have any recipe, I'm just adding different paints until I'm happy with the result. Just remember that white not only makes color brighter, but also desaturate your mixes. Keeping that in mind, I also prepared some grey nearby, so I'm also able to mix some shadow colors. I also made an additional tone by adding some pink, just to check how it will look. Now to the application. I simply painted all the skin areas with the last mix. It was just a simple, messy layer but I made sure I covered everything. After it was done, I decided to use shadow color in this step, cause I felt there was way too many areas that will be hard to reach after I paint other colors. So I used my shadow color to paint separation lines near clothes, jewelry, etc. I also applied it on all down facing parts, on her neck, lips, under the nose and in eye sockets. Finally, I added a tiny bit of magenta to the mid-tone and applied it on her knees, elbows, fingers, nose and cheeks. These are areas of the human body that have a lot of blood flow underneath the skin, so they tend to be more reddish. For all other areas, if you saw my previous videos you already know how it works. Just use mid-tones of every color prepared and apply them on specific areas. So lavender on the clothes, cherry red on flowers, brown on the hair and very dark brown on all golden elements. Remember to apply thin layers so they won't dry in lumps and destroy the sculpt. Also, you don't need to bother with your coats being uniform unless it's what you really want. In my case, I like to create an additional layer of interest by adding texture and uneven layers help me achieve that. Also, don't forget about the base. Adding basic colors there will help you decide if your scheme works. In my case, I first painted it dark brown because I wanted some dirty gold there. And when it dried, I also applied some sap green for wines and leaves and red magenta mix for flowers. You also don't need to work in this particular order. For me, at this stage, it's mostly about convenience. I'm starting with areas that will be harder to reach later and also work with the same color until I'm done with it because I'm lazy and don't want to clean my brush every minute. Ok, at this stage I'm sure colors work together pretty nicely. So let's proceed. Part 3. Volume building, textures and details. Ok, let's start with the part that took most effort. A skin. To be upfront, I'm not really happy with the result. In my opinion, something is off with the anatomy of this girl and I really couldn't catch proper volumes. On the other hand, I believe her body kind of disappears under all those strong colors and jewelry. So you can get away even with a simple layer wash highlight technique. But I wouldn't be myself if I didn't try something harder. First of all, you can apply my standard approach. Add darker color in the shadows and lighter on up-facing parts. But with a skin it's not that simple. In example, you should paint a gap between her thigh and calf, or between her right foot and left leg. 
if you want to do that, they will look as if they were fused together. Uh, creepy. I also painted some interesting details so the viewer will focus on them and won't notice my mistakes or laziness. In example, I painted this kneecap using some warm color and this collarbone with a brighter line. In both cases, I also painted some shadows around with a darker paint. The more important aspect is the face. The viewer will always look at the face, so accordingly, I'm spending quite some time defining it. But also remember, this is a small mini, so you can get away with a lot. In example, I've tried very hard to paint the eyes, and after the fifth or sixth attempt, I simply decided to paint only reflections. And you know what? It works really well. Okay, now on to painting. I'm starting by defining some shadows. While I'm showing you my painting footage, which by the way is way better this time, I will describe the process on the reference photos. Okay. First, you can use a photo of some actress or model with a strong makeup. In example, this lady. She has some strong warm shadows below her cheekbones and under the lips. I know it's over exaggerated, but believe me, it is a good roadmap for a miniature face. I painted exactly the same areas on the mini with a skin color with tiny bit of magenta and then the shadow color. Both very thin layers, so they will mix together on the mini. I also added the same color in the eye sockets. I also recommend using it to paint her lips at this stage. Then I worked my way up with the mid-tone, trying to overlap its layers with shadow colors, to make a blend. Don't stress out yourself too much though. On this small scale you will see the difference only if you take a very good photos. Then I started highlighting, again using a photo as a roadmap. So the stronger highlights on the cheekbones, nose and forehead. You might also add this highlight to a lower lip if you have a steady hand. To finish up the lips, now you only need to apply a glaze made of red magenta color we used for flowers. Just as a reminder, a glaze is a paint diluted to the degree when it's semi-transparent. One tip here, load only a little bit of this glaze to your brush, otherwise you will risk working it as a wash and going all around the mini. If you feel extra confident, Adding a tiny light dot on the lower lip adds a lot of character, in my opinion. And now the eyes. They are so small that if you paint a white eyeball, it will end up cartoony, in my opinion. After six tries, I decided to change approach. I painted the shape of an eye with dark brown. Then I painted inside this shape with white color. If the shape is too big, don't worry, just trim it around with a black color again. When you're ready, just use black, but this time just leave a microscopic white dots in the corners. It's not that hard if you start from the middle. Lastly, if you are not afraid of starting over, it might be worth it to add an additional bigger white spot in the middle of the eye. But it's your choice. Last but not least, never forget about brows. You actually don't need to paint them with the hair color, but in my case I just used very dark brown. Just notice that in the middle they start near the eye and on the sides are a bit higher. If they end up too thick or in a strange shape, just use a skin color to trim them. You probably already know I like to recommend other people videos. This time I would like you to check out this video where one of my favorite miniature painting teacher, Alfonso Giraldes aka Banshee, show his approach to painting faces. Now let's jump to the clothing. 
For the third steps, I did a similar thing that I did in previous videos of this series. Painted down facing areas with the shadow color and highlighted upper facing areas, leaving strongest highlights to the most written curves and edges. I used only dark violet, cold white and some pink at this stage. This time I decided that shadow areas are a little bit boring. So I decided to apply a filter made of very diluted magenta. I was trying hard to stay away from highlights and not overflow the mini. I think this is a way to make a violet color much more interesting. Now the flowers. I believe these are poppies or mellows, so we can get away with only a few petals and a dark center. I started by painting all of them with a mix of magenta and violet. I'm especially focused on painting borders evenly, so I don't need separation lines later. Then I painted them with a mix of magenta with red, leaving only those separation lines. Then I used red with only a bit of magenta to paint petals, and made a tiny reflections by painting the upper edges of petals with pink. Finally, I used black to add a dot in the middle and in the end some white on the tip of my brush to add a little reflection. Thanks to this tiny dot it looks much more interesting, at least to me. As for her, I try to paint it in the same way as clothes. I treat it as a single volume, not different hair strings, at least until I get to the final highlights. I used red oxide as a base, gradually mixed more with orange, which I get from red and yellow, and slowly define volumes. When I feel it looks decent, I mixed in some white, and with a tip of my brush, I paint short brush strokes on top of risen curves in direction of the hair strings. When it comes to gold, I use the same technique as in previous videos of the series, so please check them out. There were two differences though. First, on the sharp edges of the weapon, I used the side of my brush to make the strongest highlight. Second, I painted cutting edges of the scythe with the runefang steel. But I also made a happy little experiment with Molotov liquid chrome marker. I simply applied it on a brush and used its side to paint the edge. I must say this product is the most reflective paint I ever used. It looks super interesting when you move a mini around. As for the base, I painted all lower elements dirty gold. The vines and leaves got the base layer of subgreen with one or two highlights mixing in some yellow. And the flowers were painted the same way as the ones on her waist. Remember to finish up by painting the base rim black and, if you like, varnish a mini. I use polyurethane matte varnish on all areas players will touch. It's super sturdy, but remember to shake it well. On all non-metallic areas I use ultra matte varnish and on metals satin varnish from Vallejo. And here is a final result. It definitely is not my favorite mini from this set, but I really like how the colors look together. I'm especially proud of the violet, that doesn't steal all attention, but still is very vibrant. I also think I was able to fix some sculpt issues on the face with my painting, but you'll be the judge. 
let me know what you think in the comments. And that's it. I would like to use this occasion to thank you all for commenting on my videos. All your kind words are a fuel for my inspiration. I hope you will also like my future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!